1.3 billion years ago. Before the first humans, before even the first dinosaurs or plants. Well, mushrooms were first developing on the Earth. The collapsed cores of two previously supermassive stars that had collapsed down into black holes which bend space and time were orbiting around each other as they had for 10 billion years before. As these stars orbited around, they caused ripples in our understanding of space and time. We call these ripples gravitational waves. Two point three years ago, while University of Birmingham based researchers were first meeting at Birmingham Open Media, the collapsed hemispheres of two hitherto unwoken brains called Hannah Middleton and Leon Trimble, who sat next to each other for ten minutes, spoke. These words were so inspired that they caused a ripple in art and science. Over the, next this ripple, the idea. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Over the next 1.3 billion years, plants and animals evolved on Earth. The dinosaurs evolved and became extinct, and eventually, a species evolved that we call humans. These came down from the trees and crossed all of the continents. And all the time, these gravitational waves from these two black holes 1.3 billion years ago were travelling towards the Earth. Over the next year, a few remarkable things happened. The idea gave birth to a manifestation, the hardware evolved and became an interferometer, and then the modular synthesizer evolved. All the time, the idea travelled towards the performance at the speed of thought. In 1993, one of these groups of humans started work on what would become the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory. Their aim was to detect gravitational waves. In 1998, they formed a global collaboration with researchers here in Birmingham, in Glasgow, in Hanford, in Louisiana, in America, and all over the world. It took them 22 years to develop their technology. But in 2015, they turned on their gravitational wave detector and they listened. A few days later, these gravitational waves that had been traveling towards the Earth finally passed by the Earth and they were detected. 2016, one group of researchers, including Aaron Jones, who built this lovely machine, formed a collaborative called the Gravity Synth. Their aim was to perform these gravitational waves. It took two years to develop the technology, and in May 2017, they switched on the Gravity Synth and Burbles. A few days later, these sound waves that had been gathering for the past two years passed the speakers of the Birmingham Science Museum and gravity synth was manifest. These gravitational waves that passed by the Earth in 2015 inspired a colleague of mine at the Institute for Gravitational Wave Astronomy here in Birmingham to travel out to Birmingham Open Media. And there she met Leon. She sat next to him for 10 minutes, and their discussion was so profound, it caused a very small ripple in art and in science. When Hannah returned from Birmingham Open Media, she told me about her ideas of bringing uh, the science of gravitational waves and the art of electronic music together. As an instrumentalist, I develop instruments such as LIGO and I develop technology for them. 
This can be used by humans for better, or it can be used for worse. As a scientist, I only developed the technology. I was excited by the idea of bringing art and science together because that's a definite positive impact on the world. And so I built a scaled down gravitational wave detector, which you see here. It uses exactly the same technology as a regular gravitational wave detector, which would be much larger. But it's scaled down into a portable instrument. When a gravitational wave passes from the sky through to the floor, it will stretch and squash our understanding of time and space. A gravitational wave detector uses a laser as a ruler and two different directions. When the light comes back from these uh, mirrors, it undergoes a process called interference. It is exactly the same as in the ocean when you get two waves, they can add up or they can cancel out. And then we get some light on this screen over here, and by measuring this, we gain some understanding of gravitational waves. Unfortunately, gravitational waves are very small, so we can't detect them with these small instruments here. So instead, when Leon plays a note on his synthesizer, this mirror is kicked. When it's kicked, the distances in the machine change, and we're able to get some signal out in exactly the same way we do with a regular gravitational wave detector, but scaled down. We do this so that we can bring gravitational waves to more people. And we've taken them to thousands of people already. And now, we bring these gravitational waves to you.
Thank you.